Okay, and now we look at um, electrolytic technologies, electrolytes. These are compounds that in their solution, molten or fused states, allow the passage of electric currents to pass through them and so decompose during the process. So any compound that in their solution can allow currents to pass through it and in that same process decompose. Such compounds are electrolytes. Example can be an ionic salt, it can be a base, it can be an acid. Acid, base and salts are electrolytes because in their solutions or aqueous, this compound will basically dissociate into ions. Okay now, electrolytes, um, I use this as an example, this is electrolytes. But well, this is basically when it is in a matter state that is aqueous. And then it will not be an electrolyte if the matter state is solid. Examiner's focus. Sometimes, um, basically, you may be asked in an exam body to differentiate between this sodium chloride with this aqueous condition. And this sodium chloride in this solid condition. Basically, one is one is an electrolyte, the other is not an electrolyte. So you can pause the video and think which one would be an electrolyte. Of course, this is an electrolyte. This is an electrolyte, but this is not electrolytes. So this is non-electrolyte, rather non-electrolyte. And this is an electrolyte. This is an electrolyte because here the compound has dissociated into ions. So this one has free mobile ions. Free mobile ions, but here the ions are still packed in a crystal latex. And because of the nature of the packed ions, ions in this solid sodium chloride is rigid and they cannot migrate. There is no ease of migration of ions in this solid sodium chloride. But once this is an aqueous solution, the solutes, the ions are dissociated as in leaving themselves and they move to different uh, particular medium, which is basically solution fused or aqueous. Let me discuss, let me just explain uh, what this means. Solutions, yes. What is a solution? A solution could be described as when a solute dissolves in a solvent. When a solute dissolves either completely or partially in a solvent, that is a solution. But that solution is tend to be called an aqueous solution. An aqueous solution is one which contains a dissolved solute in a solvent. That is a solution. But when you try to melt this, when you heat this at a particular temperature, and it melts to give you same sodium chloride, which matter state is liquid. Okay, you didn't add water, so there is no water added. Just that this is at a particular temperature of 900, 900 degrees Celsius. This particular solid sodium chloride changed to liquid sodium chloride. So this is now in molten form. So in molten state, these ions will still break up into sodium and chloride ions. So that is molten or few states. In that condition, such ions at that point cannot allow current to flow through them. And in that process, there is a clear case of the position. So that is an issue of electrolytes. They are compound that in their solution, molten or few states can allow passage of currents to flow through them. And so decompose in the process. Types of electrolytes. There are two main types of electrolytes. Electrolyte can either be strong or weak electrolytes. When an electrolyte is strong, it simply means that uh, the ions will dissociate completely to large extents into ions in molten state. And when ions dissociate completely in solution, that means there are every tendency that much amount of electric current will flow through it than when it dissociates Partially, just like we have in weak electrolyte, we compound substance or molecule that dissociate partially in the ions or partially into their 
ions in solution. Example of a strong electrolytes are strong acids. What are basically strong acids? Strong acids can be H2, SO4 is a strong acid, so it's a strong electrolyte. HCl is also a strong acid, it's also a strong electrolyte. And then HNO3 is also a strong acid, it's also a strong electrolyte. And then H2Cr4O2 is also a strong electrolyte. So these are strong electrolytes. They are all strong acid. And then all strong bases are also electrolytes. Strong electrolytes example of strong bases are sodium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte, a strong base. Potassium hydroxide is a strong is a strong base, is also a strong electrolyte. And then when we talk about a weak electrolyte, we're going to reverse of strong electrolyte, that is weak electrolytes. Compound that we dissociate to some extent, that is partially. We have weak acids, weak base, water is a typical weak electrolyte. Examples of weak electrolytes, we have weak bases, like ammonia is a weak base, or ammonium hydroxide is a weak base, is a weak electrolyte, calcium or lime water hydroxide is also a weak base, and then sodium carbonate is also a weak base. And then we have water. Water also acts as a weak electrolyte. You know, it's half well, I will say explain it in my new video about water being an aphoteric air oxide, which is also here acting as a weak air electrolyte. Okay, non electrolytes, just like electrolytes are compounds that in their, in their solutions they will conduct electricity. Or non electrolyte are substance or compound that either in their solution or molten states do not allow electric current to flow through them. These are the examples of non electrolytes. Some covalent substances are non-electrolytes. Some molecules that are covalent compounds are non-electrolytes. Example of such covalent substances that are non-electrolytes are oxygen molecule, nitrogen molecule, um, ozone, um, chlorine molecule, even ammonia. These are uh, typical non electrolyte, they are mostly covalent compounds. Just like you can say, ionic compounds are electrolytes, covalent, some covalent compound because HCl, which happens to be a strong acid, is also a covalent compound, but it's a very strong electrolyte. So that's why I say some. So not all covalent compounds are non electrolytes, and some organic compounds too are non electrolytes, like ethanol. Why I do say some is because there are. Organic compounds that are still electrolytes. Those organic compounds that can still form ions partially, like ethanoic acid, is also an organic compound. So it can do dissociate into acetate ion and the hydrogen ion. So once it can dissociate into ions partially, is an electrolyte, but under a weak electrolyte. But this is not a non electrolyte, but it's an organic compound. So some that cannot give you that ions, ethanol, urea, sugar, sugar cane, that is sucrose, sugar cane is sucrose, your table sugar, that's what it is, glucose is not electrolytes, whatever way, whatever, whatever way you try to do on glucose in solution, it can never allow current to flow through the kerosene, is a non-electrolyte, trichloromethane, and even trichloromethane are also non electrolytes. Okay, then we quickly look at other terms in electrolysis. Uh, that would be an aspect of conductor. That should be number three now. Conductor. Okay. A conductor can be a metal or a graphite. Uh, basically, graphite is a non-metal that allow electricity to pass through them. There are conductors. Example of conductor uh, um, copper is a conductor, aluminium is a conductor, silver is a conductor. These are metals that are good conductors of electricity. And then graphite is also a conductor, but a non-metallic conductor. 
So there are some non-metals that can conduct electricity. Non-metals that can allow current or non-metals that are conductors are graphite. There is one basic fact you must know about the conductor and an electrolyte. Uh, basically, electrolytes allow currents to pass through them, just like conductors allow current to pass through them. But there is, an, there is a difference between a conductor and electrolytes. You must note that a conductor are metals. As you mean, I want to differentiate a conductor and an electrolyte. Let me have this side, conductor and here, electrolytes. What are those things that are different between the two terms using electrolytes? This is conductor. Conductors are elements. I see these are elements. Of course, you know what is element in elementary chemistry? Elements are something that cannot be split. Elements like copper, aluminium, silver, graphite is carbon. And then for graphite is what? Carbon. So graphite is an allotrope of carbon. So one of the forms of carbon is graphite. So carbon is also a metal. So these are elements. But basically, electrolytes are compounds. They are compounds. These elements can be copper, aluminium, and silver. These compounds can be copper 2, tetra, oxofixis. This compound can be H2SO4. And this compound can also be what? HCl. So this is electrolytes. And uh, basically, a conductor will allow currents to flow the, through them when they are most likely in their solid form. Solid state, they allow currents. But this must be in aqueous, hydrated form most often. They must conduct when they are in hydrated form. That's for electrolytes. And then in, um, in a conductor, a conductor can allow current to flow through them because they do have free mobile delocalized electron. So here there's a free mobile delocalized electron, and here there are free mobile. Free mobile delocalized electron here. But here there is free mobile, free mobile hydrated, free mobile hydrated ions. Okay, so electrolytes have free mobile hydrated ions that migrate during this current discharge. But here during current discharge, there are free mobile delocalized, not localized. If electrons are localized, that means current cannot be moved during the process of conductance, just like uh, diamond and graphite. Why diamond is not a conductor of electricity is because it does not have delocalized. What diamond do have is a localized electron that cannot move, that are not free, they are not moving freely, current charge or Electricity. So these are basic differences between electrolytes and a conductor. But one thing that is unique, one thing that is particularly peculiar between them is that both, both are conductor, conductor of electricity, or they are conductors. They have electrical conductors in them. They can all conduct electricity, but in different medium. Like you see the examples of it. So a conductor are metals. Or non metal. They are metals and non metal. Example of non metal that can conduct electricity is what? Graphite. The reason why graphite is a good conductor of electricity is because in graphite there is a free mobile delocalized electron. In graphite, the four, the tetravalent, the four electron in the valence shell of carbon is not all used for bonding. Three were used to give what is what we call sp2 hybrid. Then the one, the one that is unhybridized, or the one that is not used for bonding, or the one that is unbonded electron, is the reason why graphite has a layered structure. The structure is layered, and that is the reason why graphite is soft. And that is also the reason why graphite can conduct electricity, because that electron is delocalized, and is also a mobile electron, meaning that this electron can move at all times carrying electricity to other higher 
energy levels or orbitals. Okay, that is all what you need to know about the conductor and then electrolyte. Okay, the next technology we're going to look at um, a non conductor. A non conductor, just like a conductor. A non conductor are substances that they cannot allow currents to flow through them. How many of these non conductors are insulators? What are they? They are all non metals. All non metals, except graphite, are non conductor of electricity. They have non metals, they have plastics. These are examples of non conductor. Non conductor. So quickly, we go to electrodes. On that thing. Right. Electrodes. These are plates or poles or wire. It can also be wire that allows currents or electrons to move in and out of the electrolytes. A plate or a pole or a metal or a non-metal. This plate can be a metal, or this pole can be a metal, it can also be a non-metal or even a wire that allow currents or electrons to move in and out of the electrolytes. Electrolytes, which we say is they can be solutions, they can be aqueous form of an electrolytic air compound. Okay, that's our electrodes. Uh, but you must know this that sometimes an electrode can be passive, can be passive or inert or unreactive. Please take note of this aspect of electrode passive, inert, or unreactive. In electrolysis, um, anytime metals such as platinum, platinum, or non metal such as carbon or graphite, if these two are used as electrodes. They are used as a plate, or they are used as a bow, or they are used as a wire. These electrodes are passive, inert, or unreactive. What is a passive electrode? A passive electrode is an electrode that does not take part. An electrode that does not participate during electrolytic reactions. They are just there as a spectator without contributing to what is taking place or what is going on during electrolytic activity. So such electrodes are said to be passive. But on the other way around, any electrode that will get itself involved, that will be involved, or preventing ions from migrating to such electrode, such electrodes are reactive or active electrodes. So electrode can either in terms of strength of an electrode or in terms of participatory nature of an electrode, electrode can be classified into two. One passive or inert or unreactive. Two, opposite of passive can be active or reactive. So if an electrode is not passive, it is what? Active. Basically when metals such as copper is used, whenever a copper is used as a plate or as a pole or is used as a cathode or it is used as an anode, Whenever copper is used as either cathode or anode, or whenever mercury is used as a cathode or anode, or whenever zinc is used as a cathode or anode, such metals will definitely interfere with ionic discharge during electrolysis. In that case, such electrodes are referred to as active electrode. Okay, as we go on in this uh, video, we're still going to mention more on passive and the active uh, electrode. So what is an anode? This is a positive electrode. They will always be positive if it is an electrolytic cell, but negative if it is an electrochemical cell. So these are positive electrode by which conventional current enters the electrolyte or by which electron leaves the electrolyte. So when a conventional current is going into the electrolyte through the anode, at the same time, Electron is leaving the electrolyte through the same anode. So there are two things in anode 
Though, uh, there are two things. There is two rules of analog in the electrolytic process. One, it allows conventional current to enter the electrolytes. And secondly, it also allows electrons to leave the electrolyte during electrolytic reaction. This anode, opposite of anode is cathode. So these are negative electrodes. So if anode is positive electrode, cathode is a negative electrode by which current, conventional current, leaves or enters. So if anode allows, uh, allows current to enter, cathode allows current to leave. If anode allows, or if anode basically allow electron to leave, cathode will allow electron to enter into the electrolyte during electrolytic reaction. We are still going to discuss more of this during our um, calculations or solving of a past question and the answer in our subsequent uh, video. Okay. We look at the last uh, electrolytic term, which is electrolytic cell. Okay, now electrolytic cell is the assembly or the assembly of two electrodes. What are the two electrodes? The anode and the cathode. The anode and the cathode. Basically, anode is all, uh, usually called anion electrode. Anion electrode meaning that anions migrate to the anode. Why cathodes are called cation electrode. In the same vein, cations or positively or group of positively charged ion migrate to the cathode. Why a group or a charged uh, atom migrates to the what? Anode. That is basically negatively charge. Okay, now let us explain the mechanism of the uh, action of the cell. This is a cell that has uh, two electrodes dipped into it containing a solution. And that solution is in electrolytes. That solution here must be in liquid form. Then that liquid solution we now contain two electrodes, basically a positive electrode, the anode, and a negative electrode, the cathode. During electrolysis, supposing that the electrolyte is a liquid solution of copper 2, if it is a liquid solution of copper 2, tetra oxysulfate 6, that is in here. Okay, we're going to basically have ions break up, yes. Ions break up from this is copper 2 and then sulfates. Okay, uh, since it is a liquid form of this or it is a solution of copper 2, tetraoxosulfic 6, water will have the following ions H plus and OH minus. Okay, this is how ions go. Okay. Um, basically, two similar ions, these two ions are similar, being that they have the same charge. Two ions migrate to a particular electrode. So, since copper 2 and hydrogen ion are positively charged, both will migrate to the cation electrode. The cation electrode is a cathode. So, this two goes to the cathode, while this two goes to the anode. In preferential discharge, I'm going to be explaining between these two similar ions which one is preferred to be discharged since both of them cannot actually be discharged at the same time. So one is basically going to be preferred to be discharged before the other. But I don't think I'm going to be discussing that in my next um, objective. Not now. So in this case, copper and hydrogen will be in this medium in form of ions. They are non-ionic, so that there will be ease of migration. So copper will migrate, hydrogen will migrate. So put these four ions present in this electrolyte, present in this electrolyte, or present in this beaker. 
Uh, this can actually be a beta, it can even be a test. So a cell is can be is can be as small as a test. It can also be as big as an oil refinery, provided that this reaction is going on in that cell. Such cell is called electrolytic cell. So for a cell to be electrolytic, there must be two electrodes assembled together in one container. It's not a case where these two electrodes are assembled in two or more different containers. So that would becomes electrochemical cell. Uh, we shall still going to discuss that one in the course of this uh, topic on electrolysis. So this is a model of electrolytic cell. Uh, we shall still going to be discussing more about this cell because everything about this topic lies on electrolytic cell. That will be on the issue of preferential discharge of ions during electrolysis. So finally, an electrolytic cell has two electrodes dipped inside an electrolyte. Okay? Dipped inside an electrolyte that is being or that is contained in a beaker and both are connected over by a battery. I look at how electron flow. Electron is leaving um, ele uh, electron is leaving the anode and then entering the walls cathode. Electron leave the anode but conventional current enters the electrolyte through the anode. Please get that. Conventional current enters the electrolyte. This is the electrolyte. This is the electrolyte. So uh, uh, conventional current enters the electrolyte through the anode and the same current leaves the electrolyte through the cathode. But electron flows out of the anode. Look at the anode showing that electrons are moving away from the electrolyte through the anode and then enters the cathode. That's why in electrolysis, this particular electrode is deficient. This is deficient of electron. That's why anytime an anion comes, it supplies electron. It supplies electron to the anode. Any time an anion comes, uh, an, an anion comes here, it supply an electron. That is, it loses electron to this electrode. Okay, and because electron is lost in this electrode, basically the anode for this cell oxidation takes place at the anode if the cell is electrolytic. So in all electrolytic cell, oxidation takes place at the anode because once an anion migrates to the anode, there will be loss of electron. So that electron flows out. As the moment the electron flows out, this anode becomes electron deficient automatically. So once the electron gets to this particular electrode called the cathode, this place becomes electron efficient. It's an efficient of electron. That's why once a cation migrates to the anode, the cation gains an electron. So once a uh, cation gains an electron, because there are more efficient of electron in the cathode than the anode where electrons flows and the electron enters into the cathode from the anode. So this is a typical working model of an electrolytic cell. Okay, my next objective uh, will be discussing um, electrolytic mechanism, mechanism of electrolysis before I'm going to the last, which is the preferential discharge of ions in this video.